Could a simple mineral be the missing link to improving your mental health? So in today's video, we're doing a deep dive into zinc, an essential trace mineral with significant implications for mental health. So stick around because we're gonna explore the science behind zinc and how you can incorporate zinc into your mental wellness routine. So let's start with the basics. What is zinc? And why is zinc important? Well, first of all, zinc is a trace mineral that our bodies can't produce on its own. So that means that we need to get it from food or from supplements. It plays a critical role in over 300 enzymatic reactions in our body, from immune function to DNA synthesis and even brain neuronal activity. But what happens when we don't get enough zinc? Well, symptoms of zinc deficiency include things like fatigue, brain fog, depression, and even anxiety. Conditions like poor diet, gut issues, or chronic illnesses can actually lead to zinc deficiencies. And a condition specifically called pyroluria can actually be a role in excreting too much zinc. You see, pyroluria occurs when the body produces excess pyrroles, which are byproducts of hemoglobin synthesis. And these pyrroles bind to zinc and B6, which deplete these critical nutrients. And they can lead to symptoms like mood swings, anxiety, depression, and poor stress tolerance. Now we'll talk about pyroluria in a separate video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. So how does zinc specifically affect mental health? Well, let's break it down. First up, we have depression. Research consistently shows a strong link between zinc levels and depression symptoms. A 2018 literature review actually supports strongly the role for zinc deficiency in increasing the risk of depression, as well as the mood enhancing effects of zinc supplementation in populations both with and without depression. A 2013 meta-analysis found that individuals with depression had significantly lower zinc levels. The greater the deficiency, the more severe the symptoms. But why? Well, zinc actually influences brain-derived neurotropic factor, or BDNF, which is a protein essential for neuroplasticity, which I've talked about in another video. So if you've missed it, check that one out. But neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to adapt and form new connections. And low zinc disrupts this process, which is a huge factor that contributes to depression and even other mental health symptoms. And very interestingly, when zinc supplements are added to antidepressant treatment, studies have shown a faster and more significant improvement in patients' symptoms. So now let's talk about anxiety. Did you know that zinc also plays a role here? Well, a 2024 systematic review analyzed nine studies and found that individuals with anxiety tend to have lower serum zinc levels compared to healthy individuals. Additionally, increased zinc consumption was associated with reduced anxiety levels. You see, the science suggests that zinc supports neurotransmitters like GABA and glutamate, which are critical for calming the nervous system. You see, GABA reduces excitability in the brain, while glutamate helps to balance out mood. And zinc deficiency can actually disrupt this balance, leading to heightened anxiety, because if you have too much glutamate, it can actually be too excitatory. So we need the balance between GABA and glutamate for balanced mood and decreasing anxiety. A 2023 literature review also highlights the connection between trace minerals such as zinc and anxiety, as well as iron, selenium, and the importance of balancing copper. Because increased copper has been shown to cause significant levels of anxiety, which highlights another mechanism by which zinc produces anxiolytic effects. Because zinc and copper balance each other out. So if you have low zinc, you're going to have high copper, hence have higher anxiety levels. So now let's move on to zinc and ADHD. So parents, listen up. If your child has ADHD, zinc 
might actually be worth looking into. A 2011 randomized controlled trial found that zinc supplementation improved attention and impulsivity in children with ADHD. 10 years later, a 2021 systematic review and meta-analysis found that children with ADHD tend to have lower zinc levels compared to those without the disorder. So this suggests that zinc deficiency may be associated with ADHD symptoms. And it makes sense because zinc also supports dopamine regulation, which is a key neurotransmitter involved in focus and impulse control. So now let's talk about the role of zinc and neuroinflammation. And here's where things get even more fascinating because zinc isn't just a neurotransmitter, it's a powerful, neuroprotectant. You see, zinc combats oxidative stress and reduces inflammation, both of which are major contributors to mental health disorders. A 2023 review highlighted zinc's role in lowering inflammatory markers linked to neuroinflammation and proposes that maintaining proper repletion of zinc to maintain balance of zinc in the brain can actually prevent neuroinflammation and even lessen the progression of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Now, more research is needed to substantiate these claims, but this paper does a great job of highlighting the important role of zinc in neuroprotection. And let's not forget about the gut-brain axis. As I mentioned in the video on inflammation and my other video on the gut-brain connection, there is a strong link between the gut and the brain. And zinc supports a healthy gut microbiome, which is directly linked to mental health. So this can also be a mechanism of how zinc reduces inflammation and supports a healthy gut and a healthy gut means a happier mind. And another critical area for mental health where zinc has been found to be helpful is with anorexia. You see, this eating disorder can actually be both a cause and a consequence of zinc deficiency. Zinc deficiency is common in individuals with anorexia due to inadequate dietary intake and absorption issues. And actually, there are several studies which support that zinc supplementation improves appetite and reduces symptoms in individuals recovering from anorexia nervosa. Now, the work of Dr. Greenblatt on this topic is vast, and so I'm not going to duplicate any of the information he has on this topic here because it is a very deep dive. So what I'll do is put a link in the description to an article specifically on Dr. Greenblatt's website on how zinc is actually used in anorexia treatment. But to summarize, zinc supports appetite regulation and helps repair the gut lining, which is often damaged in individuals with eating disorders. So addressing zinc deficiency is a critical component to the recovery process for those with anorexia. And so let's talk about dosage and supplementation. So how much zinc do you actually need? Well, the recommended daily allowance is 8 to 11 milligrams for adults with higher needs needed during pregnancy or illness. But when we're looking at doses that were used in the studies to treat depression, anxiety, anorexia, and ADHD, the doses are varied. So anywhere from 15 milligrams to 60 milligrams per day, usually in divided doses. But those with pyroluria, which we mentioned earlier, may not see benefit until they reach 100 milligrams per day. So it's very important to work with a provider to help you figure out the best dose for you. When we're talking about dietary sources, the richest sources of zinc are found in meat, fish, and seafood, with oysters providing the highest zinc content per serving. Now, beef is a significant contributor to zinc intake in the United States due to its common consumption. Eggs and dairy products also provide some zinc, and there are also plant-based sources of zinc, like beans, nuts, and whole grains, but its absorption is hindered by phytates, which bind zinc in the intestines and decrease its absorption. So those who are vegan and vegetarian and only consuming plant-based sources of zinc will actually have a higher need for zinc supplementation. But when it comes to supplements, 
not all forms of zinc are created equal. So the top three forms of zinc are going to be zinc sulfate, zinc gluconate, and zinc picolinate. These are the most bioavailable forms. It is also important to take zinc with food to minimize or avoid gastric upset or nausea. And nausea tends to be the most common side effect, but that can be alleviated with taking zinc with food. And excess zinc can also cause copper deficiency, as we mentioned earlier. So a balance of zinc and copper is key. You can also get too much zinc. So taking zinc in daily doses that are greater than 100 milligrams per day can actually lead to severe side effects and toxicity with symptoms such as dizziness, lethargy, nausea, and vomiting. And zinc toxicity can actually damage the pancreas and the liver and can interfere with the absorption of other essential nutrients and minerals such as iron and copper. So that is why I always emphasize to consult with your healthcare provider before starting any supplement regimen, especially if you're on medications or have chronic conditions. So to recap, zinc is a small but mighty mineral with big implications for mental health. Whether it's supporting mood or reducing anxiety or improving focus, getting enough zinc could make a real difference in your mental wellness journey. So, do you have any experience with taking zinc to improve your mental health? I'd like to hear about it because we learn from sharing each other's experiences and others in the comment section could also learn from sharing your story. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental wellness journey, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next video.